So let's get to it, gentlemen. Should the West intervene in uh, Sudan? As always, we begin with our quick fire round. 30 seconds each will add your initial stance on the matter, and we'll pick it up uh, from there. So, uh, Usumain Baraka, please take the lead. Your 30 seconds are on. Thank you. Um, well, um, the Western uh, um, countries, you know, uh, they can uh, intervention in Sudan in different ways. Uh, what I say. One is that um, um, the countries, they can send um, like uh, humanitarian aid to IDP camps in, their, in Sudan and Darfur or around the country, and then also send to um, refugee camps. Mm. And and also, you know, the, the second thing is that also to, share, to send uh, kind of or to put uh, sections yeah. to on Sudan uh, Sudanese officials. Yeah. Um, so there are to, different you know, different types of intervention. We will uh, unpack it further in, in a second. We will just conclude our first uh, uh, round. Uh, Hussein Abdul uh, Hussein, uh, your thoughts? Uh, the West should absolutely intervene in Sudan. Intervention doesn't have to be military, shouldn't be military. Mm. The West has a huge toolbox in which to intervene diplomatically, economically, uh, offer humanitarian aid, try to find leverage to convince the combating parties to uh, uh, seek a truce, stop the fighting, and push toward peace. Yes, again, the different uh, types of intervention. Last but not least, uh, Michael Tracy, your thoughts? Well, whatever hesitation there might be in the U.S. to intervene in Sudan can't be born of an aversion to engage in a proxy war with Russia. That's hmm. obviously already going on full bore yeah. in Ukraine. It's interesting because I was in Washington, D.C. last week, and there was a man who made a reasonable point to me. He was Sudanese himself. He was clamoring for greater U.S. intervention in the country to bring a cessation to the violence. And he said, Ukraine is calling for all these weapons, these tanks, these missile systems, and so forth. We just want humanitarian aid, and yet there's no significant constituency for providing that. Yeah. And he wondered about that discrepancy, and I thought it was a fair point. Yeah, the uh, priorities or hypocrisy when it comes uh, to global conflicts. On that note, gentlemen, let's uh, please feel free to interact. And uh, Michael Tracy, we will dive in further into the Russian angle, if you will, uh, later on in the conversation. But, um, uh, Sumain, I do want to begin with you. Uh, will the war in Sudan stay in Sudan? Say again the question again? Whether uh, uh, the war in Sudan remains only local, only in Sudan? Well, uh, people in Sudan now, the, the local um, people trying to, you know, go to different countries and to becoming refugees, a border between Chad and Sudan. So a lot of refugees from Sudan going to Chad area and also go to a border to Ethiopia and also Eritrea and also South Sudan. A lot of people trying to get out of, of the country because that situation became very difficult and people even didn't get any help from other international organizations. So now the situation all over the country is became very tough. It's, uh, just uh, uh, four days, uh, last four days, just in city Jenina, uh, hundreds of people killed mm -hmm. by militias of the Sudan government called we call Janjaweed, and just killing uh, like you know uh, people. Civilians and and the civilians uh, they trying to even to get out and get some help and they didn't found any help and now you know a lot of uh, people in Sudan who is not citizen of Sudan uh, even they want to also try to get out of Sudan yeah. also that's uh, for them also it's became very difficult uh, situation right now um, so um, we can see in the, our our fast. Uh, because a uh, uh, Juba peace agreement uh, 2020, uh, before that agreement, a lot of also UN forces, they were in Darfur area. And after they are left, uh, after a uh, Juba uh, peace agreement, and that's the situation became yeah. more worse or Darfur area. And yeah. the people dying every day. So that was kind of wrong decision that's like UN forces to leave the situation in Darfur area. And, and to that point, Mr. Abdul Hussein, uh, is it in the power or should it be in the power of, of foreign actors to, to prevent local conflicts such, such as this one? 
it's not only a prerogative, it's in the interest of Western powers. Hmm. Uh, no one wants to see a failed state. I don't think uh, the Sudan and the fighting in Sudan uh, will be contagious. It'll be it'll remain in Sudan. What? But there will be a spillover, in terms of uh, if, if when Sudan becomes a failed state, uh, you will risk having terrorism, uh, narcotics, piracy in the Red Sea. Uh, all these uh, problems will threaten uh, countries of the region and countries of the world eventually. And that's why the West has an intrinsic interest in uh, getting to uh, some sort of peace and having someone who manages Sudan preventing a failed state. Uh, this does not mean that the West needs to uh, deploy its military force because it's mm. really absurd to be engaged in a civil war where everyone is just fighting everyone and you don't know who's friend and who's foe. Uh, but as a, a lot of uh, uh, instruments through which to try to get Sudan, try to go the leaders, the, the two fighting generals, to convince them that, that they have to stop. Uh, I'm not sure whether they can. I think at this point, uh, the, the, the war looks uh, endless. Uh, it looks pointless. And, and I'm not sure un unless we get to, uh, unless the two parties are tired enough to stop fighting, mm. just like what happened in Yemen. Everyone tried to stop the fighting, and it went on for years. It even went out of the news cycle, and then when everyone uh, felt tired, they just stopped fighting. So my fear is that this is this is what will happen in Sudan with no one who has actual leverage to force these parties to stop fighting. And speaking to that point, uh, uh, Michael uh, Tracy, uh, uh, Jan, broadly speaking, is foreign intervention easing or deepening local conflicts? And, and as a follow-up question, if you will, maybe uh, or should rather regional actors spearhead intervention, in our case, Ethiopia, Saudi Arabia, and not the U.S. or Russia for that matters? Well, one of the problems with calls for intervention on humanitarian grounds is that, in, at least in the case of the U.S., it's often a pretext for the U.S. to achieve other geopolitical mm. prerogatives. So, for example, in 2019, there were calls and clamors for humanitarian intervention of a sort in Venezuela. And the Trump administration claimed that it was going to be provisioning convoys of medical aid and food supplies and so forth into the country. And they freely admitted not long afterwards that it was essentially a regime change operation. Similar pretexts have been cited around U.S. interventionist policies in Syria and even in Ukraine pre-2022 invasion. So I do think it's worthwhile to be wary of the ultimate ambition of some of these policy proposals. And I would just ask the gentleman from the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, which agitates for intervention all over the world all the time, so that's nothing new. But I'm wondering like, what specifically is he calling for the U.S. to do in Sudan that it's not already doing? If you're talking about just brokering a ceasefire, the U.S. at least purports to have already been involved in doing so as of last week and actually brought about a cessation of the warfare in Sudan, unlike in Ukraine, where it works against a ceasefire. So it's interesting to see how quickly the U.S. can obtain a ceasefire when it actually wants to cease the fighting. But beyond that, what is he so desperate for the U.S. to do exactly? Hussein Abdul Hussein, the floor is yours. Well, I'm happy that I got to break his stereotype that we're agitating for intervention because I clearly said I do not support military intervention. So uh, military uh, intervention is one of the tools in the foreign policy box, but it does not work everywhere. And in the case of Sudan, it absolutely does not work. Uh, the U.S. understand that we have we don't have enough leverage in Sudan, but we have to do uh, the utmost that we can. Uh, to get to peace, to make the fighting stop. The, the U.S. doesn't really yeah. have, unlike what uh, Russian propaganda and other propaganda says, doesn't have actual uh, uh, vested or hidden interest in Sudan, not after the resources, not after basing rights in Sudan. The U.S. already uses bases in Egypt. Uh, and there's, there's no need for a port to the Red Sea. So all these demands have been uh, voiced by Russia to Sudanese leaders. The U.S. has, has helped to a uh, uh, zero uh, debt has helped to reconnect Sudan after the change of the regime of al-Bashir, has, has been trying to, uh, to help push Sudan in a positive direction. I don't think a military intervention is warranted at this point. Uh, I don't think that the West ha has a, a, a magic wand with, with which it can end the fighting and, and make everything right and disappear. But the West has 
a clear responsibility to help in terms of humanitarian aid, to help in terms of, of getting everyone to uh, uh, to be reasonable and to stop the fighting in the best interest of the Sudanese and everyone in the region. I'm not sure I heard him call for a single specific measure. I mean, I think earlier he referenced sanctions. That's always the tool in the toolkit that's instinctively deployed by the U.S. Economic warfare the world over, irrespective of how effective that policy yeah. tends to be, which is usually not very but yeah. other than that, I didn't hear him call for anything. Uh, 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 Michael, just before we wrap up the first part of our conversation, now let's uh, allow Usumena to chime in. Yeah. Yeah, I do believe that, you know, the Western countries, they have to be uh, involved by any ways to do how to even protect the civilians because they have to bring uh, the forces, army forces even to just for uh, the goal will be just to keep to, uh, uh, the civilians be safely because there's if no forces, uh, that will be a very difficult situation in Sudan. So they have to involve what's going on in Sudan. Okay, obviously, gentlemen, we have uh, much more uh, to unpack. So you're staying uh, with us, uh, Hussein Abdul Hussein, Michael Tracy, and Usumena Barka. We're taking a, a short break.